Well, welcome to our meeting. It is August, it's July, not, not August yet, almost August, so July 29th. Let's open in prayer and then we will start working through the sheet of paper you have there in front of you. Father, I pray that this evening that we would understand your gentleness, the way that you are firm, strong, unchangeable, but yet you deal with us in gentle ways and then help us to learn from that as we've been seeing in the book of James and then as we will see this evening spread throughout more of the New Testament. And then as we try to make some applications of that in our lives, that we would grow to be more like Christ today than we were yesterday. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So everybody needs a prayer sheet and one of the notes there. Sometimes, you know, when I'm not going through a certain passage of Scripture, it, it becomes easier to, to have stuff in front of us so you see where we're going. And I, I think that'll help this evening. 2020's really been a mess for everybody. And it's a mess for we believers in Jesus Christ to know how to act at any particular time, how to respond to others, how to work at reflecting Christ in our actions. Sunday was in James chapter 3 about our tongue, the use of our tongues. It's very, very obvious that our tongues get us in deep trouble and they light huge fires that we can't put out. But the very next verse, we won't get to it for another week and a half, but the very next verse in James chapter 3 then goes into what living in a wise, godly way looks like. And one of the words that James uses is meekness. So there in your notes... Um, first scripture passage is there. James uses meekness two times. Use it as in James 1, verse 21, where he says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity or overflow of wickedness, naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. And then James 3.13 that we will see in a week and a half. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? So just pause at that. So he looks at uh, across his audience and he says, Anybody here wise? Well, I hope so. I'm, I'm wiser than they are. And they're raising their hand. And he says, okay, here it goes. Show out of your good lifestyle, your conversation, your works with meekness of wisdom. Same word speaking of receiving God's truth in chapter 1, but then of living God's truth in chapter 3. And that makes it so helpful for us to know that if we're going to consider, are we wisely living our lives and are we living our lives by faith, reflecting the faith that we have? Am I living in a meek way or something else? And... Remember, we did define it in chapter 1, but I will define meekness again. The idea of a strong humility or gentleness under control. Um, it was used of, of like war horses being under the control of the person who was riding them. Uh, huge amounts of strength, but yet under control. So meekness is not weakness. Meekness is not milk toast meekness is actually standing firmly but gently at the same time and we're to live out our lives gently and if we're not most likely we're not living reflecting true faith in God we're reflecting something else um, so let's just work through some of these verses that are in front of us um, these are all the New Testament words, and how you do this is you you look up in your strong in your um, e sword um, the word that word meekness, 
and you just say, show me every time it's in the New Testament. And there it goes. It just pops up and they're all highlighted for you. And it's a very neat tool that you can use. Then you can use the tool in eSword to tell, is this exactly the same original word or is this a different word? And the two in James uh, are the, exactly the same word, a different form, you, you know, just a different ending um, than these other ones. So in 1 Corinthians 4, Paul, remember, is writing to a very disobedient, a very fleshly church, and he asks them a question, what do you want? You know, what would you rather? And I don't know if you've ever played that game, would you rather, and, and then you, you, this or that. And he says, would you rather that I come to you with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? How do you want me to correct you, basically, is what James is saying. Did you ever have a preference between mom and dad as far as who would give you the correction when you'd done something wrong? Um, if mom said, wait till dad gets home, you knew you were in trouble, right? Um, although sometimes when Betsy had a sliver growing up, she had dad take it out because dad was more gentle than mom. Mom was the nurse, you know, she just gouges it out and gets it done. Um, so, so Paul says, which would you rather that I do? Come to you flailing around with a stick? Or do you want me to come in gentleness, in, in the spirit of meekness? Control in control of myself. Um, most of us have experienced correction by others who were out of control when they did so. And Paul is just asking that question. How do you want me to come? And that helps us a little bit to think how would, how would somebody else want me to correct them? Gently or flailing around with a stick? Um, in 2 Corinthians 10, again, Paul is still writing to the same church and then he's describing how he's correcting them. Uh, now I, Paul, myself, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but in being absent and bold toward you. He was, he was describing to them, they were saying, yeah, he's just really, he runs his mouth when he's not in our presence, but when he comes in our presence, he's this meek little guy. But he says, no, I'm writing to you. I'm not with you right now. And I'm writing to you very gently, just like Christ. And that teaches us, too, that Christ corrects us in a gentle way. And then Galatians 5, we had looked at this Sunday morning, that meekness is actually a fruit of the Spirit. So it's not something we're going to be able to come up with on our own. We actually need the Holy Spirit to grow this in us. And almost like patience, you might pray to the Lord, give me patience, and what does the Lord give you? He gives you an opportunity to practice patience, an opportunity when you, are, you could become very impatient. And, and he, he's growing patience in you by giving you these opportunities, and often he grows meekness in us by giving us opportunities where we just want to run our mouths, when, when we just want to, to blast somebody on Facebook. And, and instead, um, he teaches us to be meek, to be under control. Galatians 6, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. And remember the picture there in Galatians 1 in, in restore is, is used of setting a bone that was broken. Do you want the doctor to just start cracking away on you or do you want him to be as gentle as he can? Often there has to be firm pressure to, to get the bone back in place, but you want the, them to be as gentle as they can, you know, meekness. Colossians 3 verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies and kindness, humility of mind. And then there's our word, meekness. And then long-suffering. 
So meekness is part of our Christ-like clothing we must put on. Um, the New Testament uses this illustration of taking off the clothing that doesn't match, that doesn't fit, that is filthy, and putting on Christ-like clothing. And Colossians 3 is describing that. First Timothy 6, Paul is telling Timothy how to approach pastoring, how to approach shepherding people. And he says, but in verse 11 of chapter 6, 1 Timothy 6, 11, But thou, O man of God, flee these things. What things? They were things reflecting the way we would deal with it in our flesh. Flee these things and then follow after. And that's the word pursue or chase down. Chase it with all your might. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and then our word meekness. Chase after it, pursue it, and then flee the opposite. Flee th this, this just blowing off steam or attacking other people. Um, be gentle in how we approach them. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 through 26, Paul tells Timothy, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. The servant of the Lord isn't there to, to pick fights. But be gentle to all men, apt to teach and patient. And then verse 25 says, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God perhaps will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. So, again, Paul's instruction to Timothy, in meekness instructing those that oppose. Um, you're teaching gently, but firmly. You're not going to budge on the truth, but you teach it in a, in a controlled, um, firm, gentle way. Um, there is a lot of error in 2020. And what's interesting is how quickly Facebook and YouTube take down certain videos. Uh, a few observations today about that um, is it only took 24 hours to, to purge the internet of this video of doctors. But how many decades has it been that they've been saying that we've been fighting child pornography? We can't do anything about it. It's, we're, we're, we're helpless to do anything about it. They can take anything down they want to in, in, in just hours. Um, so how do we understand what's true, and then how do we stick up for truth and teach truth? And often, unfortunately, in the last few months, it's been just blast them hard one way or blast them hard the other way and really not a whole lot of meekness um, of under control type of gentle teaching. Titus chapter 3 verse 2. Again, Paul is talking to Titus about what church leaders should be like. And he says they should speak evil of no man, not be brawlers, in other words, not be picking fights all the time, but be gentle, showing all meekness, to all men. So instead of pecking fights, be in control of yourself and always gently engage with others, with the people around you. So meekness, gentleness. And then 1 Peter 3.15 is a verse that we often memorize as it relates to um, sharing the gospel with others. It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you, and then how do you do that? You do it with meekness and fear, a reverence. Um, you're not, you're not going to win somebody to the Lord by shooting them with a machine gun, um, a machine gun with words. Even you're going to win them to Christ by being Christ-like, and that's by being gentle, but yet firm by sharing the truth. Be prepared to share that truth. Uh, but, but do so in a gentle way. Now I'm going to jump back to Ephesians chapter 4 
I almost spent all the evening to this evening on this. But Paul in chapter 4 of Ephesians verse 1, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Again, in a week and a half, we will deal with the last part of James chapter 3 talking about what the wisdom from above is like. And it's gentle, it's easy to be entreated. It, it sows peace, not discord. And what Paul is telling the Ephesian believers, and I'll, I'll just remind us of this. Remember, there's six chapters in Ephesians. The first three are dealing with truths of the Christian life, the basis for how we're going to live our lives. And then chapter 4, 5, and 6 are how we live out the Christian faith. So he says, I beseech you, therefore, because of your foundation in Christ, what you're building your life on in Christ, live this way. And one of the ways we're to live is meekly, you know, gently, under control, not out of control. Um, here are some of the applications on the back side of your paper that... I worked on in Ephesians chapter 4. There are five primary headings there in Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. Humility, and then this meekness or gentle strength under control, and then there's patience, and then there's bearing with one another in love, and then eager to maintain the unity of the faith. Or this, this being diligent to maintain unity. And then there's some applications that you can see there um, under each. For instance, under humility, in 2020, we probably need to be careful about having um, unrealistic expectations. When we have unrealistic expectations, we're saying, my way has to get done. And God says, oh, really? And that's all, happened a lot in 2020 for all of us. We had it planned out, and God says, well, I'm time to humble yourself. Um, live and serve to show love, not to get something in return. Um, seek to know other people and ask good questions. Offer to help other people versus um, tell them what to do. Um, seek other people's wisdom, desires, thoughts. Be grateful for our differences. Um, be grateful that everybody's not like you. You'd probably be really frustrated then, too. Um, so that's humility. Um, then this meekness or gentle strength under control. Be, be gracious in my words. Um, the way it's put in a lot of places, to speak to edify others, to build up others, not to tear them down. Um, examine your heart before you speak. Remember in James 3 how the mouth is the fountain of the heart. So whatever you say is going to be coming right out of where your heart is at this particular moment. So examine your heart before you speak. And then if something difficult needs to be said, um, be very careful in, in planning how to say it. Proverbs has a lot of good instruction about that. It talks about a word spoken in due season, so at the right time. It talks about pleasant words. It talks about sweet words, words that are palatable to the people around us. Um, so be meek, be gentle in our communication. And patience, you, you can see those on your papers. But let's work on some of the verses we looked at relating to meekness. So James 1, where it says, meekly receive the engrafted word, um, humbly receive God's guidance, God's truth, submissively receive what God has to tell you. Um, I ran on this today in a, a totally different kind of article. Um, but this came from C.S. Lewis's wife, and she had come to the conclusion that sometimes, or many times with God, she would go, fine, if that's how you want it, God, I'm willing to do it. And that's a far cry from saying, God, 
I love what you're doing and I want to submit to what you're doing in my life. A big difference. Again, that's a totally different topic, but humbly receive what God has to tell you, James 1. James 3 is the other way around. Rather than flailing in the flesh to accomplish what you want to accomplish, it says the wise person lives out, is showing, is displaying out of his good lifestyle, his works with meekness of wisdom. So it's under control the way that we're living. Self-control is there. And again, you can open these up in your own lives. Your situation is different than mine. And you can, you can write some more applications on these, but these are just possible ones. And there's a bunch of different verses there. 1 Corinthians 4, um, 2 Corinthians 10, 2 Timothy 2.25, Galatians 6. When we are correcting others, seek to do so in a gentle, controlled way. That means you're going to have to have God's help to not lose it when you're frustrated. The world frustrates us so many times, and often the people around us do as well. So ask for God's help to do so in a controlled way, correcting others in a controlled way. Again, Galatians 5.23, speaking of the fruit of the Spirit, readily admit that you don't have it in you to, to be controlled, to be self-controlled. Ask the Holy Spirit, cooperate with the Holy Spirit, um, use the Holy Spirit's tools of the Word of God in prayer and the help of other believers to help you to grow in this fruit of the Spirit. Colossians 3.12, when I see the filthy clothes of not being gentle and patient and kind and under control, I'm going to discard those clothes and I'm going to Ask the Holy Spirit for help to put on meekness as a reflection of Christ living in me. 1 Timothy 6, 11, I will be aware of my natural tendency to chase after selfish desires. And aren't we all apt to chase after selfishness, selfish things? So we understand that I'm aware of that. I'm going to purposely flee these things and I'm going to chase after, I'm going to pursue gentleness and, and godliness. Um, Titus chapter 3, verse 2, rather than slandering and attacking others, I will gently seek to help them. Um, rather than trying to get rid of them, I'll try to help them along. And then 1 Peter 3, I'm going to put God first in my life. It says, sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Set him apart as special. Put him first. And then speak for him in gentle ways. I don't know if you've ever tried to share the gospel and the person was arguing with you. So you just argued more. And that usually doesn't work very well. That isn't reflecting God's own heart of gentleness and meekness. So, so we want to reflect God in our promises. We want to show that our hope is in God, not in our smart arguments, not in our well thought through um, statements. So I'm going to point to God in my responses to others. Any observations? That was kind of a quick study. There's enough there for you to do some homework.